Hey guys, welcome to Stone Advice. This video is about Alpha Cam. It's an introduction to the toolbar. We go kind of cover, it's an hour long, so I'm literally talking about every single icon I toolbar and I give examples of how they work. Um, go ahead and watch the video. It's long, I talk fast, that's not a problem. You can actually rewind and watch it twice if you're confused. And if you're still confused, you can leave a question in the comments or better yet, just get on your phone and give me a call. I'll try to help you out. Alpha Cam basic tutor tutorial introduction to the interface. We are on the draw and manipulate tab. If you'll notice up here, there's three tabs. There's draw and manipulate. That's where we go to draw stuff and make different shapes and manipulate the geometry. In the center, we have save and special tools. This is where you, um, yours is probably gonna look a little bit different than this, or ours is a little bit customized because we've been experimenting with using the nesting function. But this is where you insert your alpha cam drawings, input, uh, problem solving stuff, special tools. This stuff in the middle is stuff you don't use that off often unless you're either saving or whatever. And then the final tabs are Sasso saw tools. This is where we insert nests, prepare parts, insert tables, and basically all the functions to drive the saw. At the top, you have a customizable quick access ribbon that's up here. These are always here. These are tools that you can grab. Like I can be in the uh, sawing menu and then come up here and if I want to draw a box, I can click on that and draw a rectangle. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the draw and manipulate screen and I'm gonna to explain to you what all these icons do and how they work and what their basic functionality is. So, so right away, we're gonna just put a couple shapes on the screen, draw a couple rectangles here real quick. And what I want to show you is a few tools. The very first command is zoom all. You'll notice when I hover over below it, you're going to see the letter Z. That is the keyboard shortcut that we've assigned to this computer for this tool. What zoom all does when you click on it, it will bring everything on the screen and zoom it in as much as possible. Now you'll notice how we can see everything. Now if I go out and I move something off the screen and I zoom in on one thing and I'm working here, and I hit zoom all, it will then go back to the other objects on the screen. Right next to it is a command called zoom window. What this allows you to do when you select zoom window by left clicking, you can then, you'll notice any time in AlphaCam when you select something, whether it's move, delete, or not delete, move, copy, rotate, in this case zoom window, when you first select the icon, you'll sometimes we'll get a crosshair. Anytime you see a crosshair in AlphaCam, think of a rifle scope. And what it's asking where, where do I want to zoom on the left to the right? And you draw a box around it and it zooms in. I can select zoom window again and zoom right in on this corner. And I can continue to zoom in on the corner till I get as close as I want. Another way that we can zoom is by taking the scroll wheel on your mouse. You can roll the mouse away from, roll the scroll wheel away from you and objects will move away. Or you can roll it towards you and objects will come at you. If you have a, roll ma a rolling mouse, a rolling, a roll, a scroll wheel on your mouse, many, mi most of the mouse, mice, mices, most of the mouse, most of the mice, most of the mouse, you push down to the center and you can pan with it left and right or up and down. This is useful. Okay, let's talk about some other concepts while we're talking about the scroll wheel on the mouse. If we scroll away, the object moves away. Now, if I want to zoom in on the object on the right, I move my cursor to the right and then I zoom in. And wherever I place the cursor is where the zoom goes. So, so I can push out and move the cursor over, push in, pull out, in, out. Make sense? So now we're going to zoom all. I'm going to go ahead and delete one of these. Hit zoom all again, and now we've just got a box on the screen. Now, you'll notice right next to it is undo. I can undo the action that I just did, or redo it. Make it, come, make it go away, make it come back. Undo, redo. All right, cool. I'm going to hit the keyboard shortcut for zoom all, and I'm going to hit Z, and boom, we're back at our square. Now, the next item we have next to it is called the symbol library. This is a preset um, series of commands and, and, and uh, tools that we've provided you to help you mark out countertops. Now, you'll notice you have all kinds of symbols here. And uh, we'll get into more what all these symbols mean and how to deploy them in the next series of videos where we actually show you how to draw a kitchen and how to clean it, or how I like to draw kitchens and clean up parts and stuff. But basically, just so you know, this gives you access to your symbol library. This is also user-definable. You can change these symbols. You can rename it. This is totally yours to modify. All right, moving right along. I'm going to go ahead and hit the D key, which is the keyboard shortcut for delete. I'm going to go ahead and delete by drawing by left-clicking 
and drawing a box around everything I want to go away. I'm going to left click. Do I want to delete anything else? It's all blue. If you're done selecting, then you right click to execute and click OK and this task happens. So anyway, moving right along, next to that we have the sync library icon. This gives you access to where you could store all your syncs. For example, in here we have some swans and we'll bring one in and take a look at it. And there's a swan QZAD la 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 sync. So this is how you access your sync library. The command next to this one called straighten parts is a SASO special tool. We had this developed to help you. One of the things that happens when you're doing digital templating, often you're going to bring in parts that aren't square to the world. They'll be crooked or slightly off. And it's very useful in, when you're preparing drawings for kitchen and cutting that you actually square your parts out. We do this by selecting the command straighten parts. Now you notice when I click on straighten parts, you look down below and it says text sign, select geometries to rotate. So now I'm going to select the geometry. Do I want to rotate anything else? The answer is no. So now I'm going to right click my mouse and now you'll see down below it says select reference edge. After I've right clicked, I select the edge I want to rotate to flat. It asks me do I want to rotate another 90 degrees. Maybe I want it to go 90 degrees this way or 90 degrees this way. Once you get it to the orientation that you want, simply select no and you'll be squared up with the world. Now let's pretend this was a countertop for a minute. As a matter of fact, we're going to take a we're just going to go ahead and draw a countertop. So I'm going to go ahead what I did now is I just selected the delete key or I could have hit the keyboard shortcut D drawn by left clicking started a, a box to select something drew a box around it now I'm left clicking. Do I want to select anything else? The answer is no. So I'm going to right click. Now it's asking me if I want to delete one geometry. If I click OK it will go away. There's another way that you can do this. You can hit the D key for so now I'm going to hit the D for delete. Now I'm going to select the object by clicking on it. I can also deselect it by unclicking on it. Why is that useful? Well, I might have multiple objects in a drawing and I decide I want to delete one of these objects and I accidentally click this one when I actually want to delete this one. Now by if I want to deselect it, I simply click on it again. Think of it like a toggle. I want it I don't want it. I'm just left clicking. Do I? And I, every time I click, I said, do I want to do it, delete anything else? The answer is no. Then I'm going to right click and verify. Yep, get rid of that stuff. So anyway, back to the countertop drawing that we just made. Let's pretend that this is the front of the countertop. We're going to know this because we're going to hit O for offset. And we're going to tell it to offset a construction line 1.5 inches from the front we're going to select the edge, then we're going to move the mouse to the inside and it's going to create a construction line which represents the front of the cabinet. Now we're going to say that we want to put four pieces of backsplash on this countertop, right? So we would come to offset element. There are three types of things that you can make with offset element. This is a tool that we developed to help people uh, make mitering and laminating easier. In this case we're going to do backsplash. Now you'll notice right here where it has auto check and it says 0.14. What this program is doing is referencing the thickness of the blade and it's saying, hey, if we're going to draw some backsplash automatically, let's go ahead and move it the distance, the correct width of the blade so that we can execute a common line cut and make the saw work less. So we're going to select backsplash in the radio button. We're going to click OK and then we're going to come over to the geometry. See it says select line to create backsplash. Pick near end to align. Click. Click click and that is how you use the offset element command to create backsplash. Let's pretend we want to make something cool like a little cube mitered box. We would come up to select offset element. In this case we're going to do a mitered apron. We have the user defined distance of to automatically space to allow for the blade to get into the miter to set to 0.45. Some customers like to do it at a half inch, some like to go a little co closer. We're very comfortable with 0.45. Now if you look here you'll see width. In this case we're calling out that we want to do a two inch apron, right? Well we're not. We're going to do a six inch apron. So now I click OK and I want to miter this side, this side, this side, and this side and create a nice little apron box. Now you notice the distance here is at 0.45 apart. Now there's another command that's available. That's how you do miters and, and oh, one other thing, an offset element. You can also do a lamb strip. 
Like if you wanted to do a lamination, you could call that a lamb strip, and it would move it, it just like making backsplash. It would move it the correct width of the blade. So anyway, on to the next one, common line move. This is what you do if you have objects that are drawn separately like this. And so you've got some different pieces floating around. And you want to set some of these cuts up for common line cutting, right? So what you could do is you could come here and select the common line move. You'll notice it says 0.14 because it is querying, because we haven't checked, it's going to query the width of the blade. I'm going to click OK. And now notice I'm going to move this object from right here to right there. Sorry, right here to right here. And the way I did that is that what the way this command works, it's a little trick. You've got to get used to it. You select common line move, click OK. Then you click on the piece that you want to move left click. Do you want to move anything else? No. Right click. And what I want to do is I want to put the piece over here on this side by picking it up right here and dropping it off right here. Ah, I changed my mind. I want to put it on the other side. Select common line move, click OK. Select the object you want to move, right click to accept. I'm going to move it from this side to this side. Now, I could also take this piece and select common line move, click OK, select the object I want to move, click on the top left side, and move it to here. And all these maneuvers are automatically spacing it for the correct width of the blade. This will make the saw more efficient and allow it to cut without creating quite as many movements. The next command over is called Simplified Line Segment. The purpose of this command is if you've got a line that has a lots of small deviations in it, say for example a backsplash, you could use this command to create a rule that says any objects that are within a user-defined distance, in this case a third of an inch, or we could make it 0.12 for an eighth, um, and we're not going to delete the original, and we're going to draw a box around it. Now, if you look here, because that box was so small, or so big, or so small, it didn't make any change. Now you notice if I come in to simplify, and say I move it to 0.3, right? We come in here, we click OK, and now when I draw a box around the line, you'll see that there's two lines. One of them is consists of three segments, and one of them is a straight line. What it's done, it's blended the segments into a straight piece. Here you can see if I hit explode, this is three pieces, right? And this is one piece. Um, you'll know if you'll ever need to use it's a pretty there's not very often you would use that command. If one of your employees overscribes a wall and you want to straighten it out a little bit, that's what that command's useful for. So anyway, moving right along. So we're going to get into some other concepts here. The next button over is called Ortho Mode. Now Ortho doesn't actually, it's not a drawing tool. It, you don't create geometry with it. it. It helps you manipulate geometry in a certain way. So for example, if we use the Line command, we select the icon. Did it work? I think we're back on. All right, so we were talking about a line. My girlfriend called, guys, sorry. So we were talking about a line. All right, we'll start with that. So when you make a line, you'll notice when you click the line command, right, and the shortcut for line, because we make a lot of lines, is L. But see how it, when I hover over it, it says L? You guys should be using keyboard shortcuts, not using the icons. It's 10 times faster. So now when you select line, it's, you'll notice as soon as the cursor moves into the black space below where the drawing field is, you get a crosshair. That crosser is saying, hey, man, where do you want to start this line? Well, I want to start it right here by left clicking. And then you pull away and you'll see the dotted line. It says, OK, where do you want to stop the line? I want to stop it over here, left click. Now, you'll notice if you pull away, it wants to make another line. If you want to just make one line, you right click. And that means telling your computer, I'm done. So now you've got your line. Now, it turns out that we generally don't want to draw random lines. It's not what we do. We normally want to dry, draw lines in ortho, which means the line will either go up or left to right, like this. 
Notice I can't move it a diagonal. That's ortho on. Ortho comes into play in, in several different ways. For example, if we select rotate, we want to rotate everything on the screen. In ortho mode, we can only rotate in 90 degree increments. See that? Now, if we take it out of ortho, we can free rotate right we can go in any angle any direction the minute we select ortho mode it starts moving in 90 degree chunks okay so that's what ortho does it keeps things moving and up and down or left or right and this is a useful command you use ortho a lot as we and you'll see as we get into the uh, further down the road all right so anyway so if we want to make a line that's how we make a line and now that we're making geometry basically these five shapes the line the rectangle the arc circle and the oval you can pretty much draw anything in the world with these sets of tools it's only five but those you can draw the Empire State Building with those five with those five shapes you could draw a car with those five shapes but anyway well there's an exception we'd have to throw a spline in there but we don't need to get into that right now all right so let's talk about how this is all gonna work when we make a rectangle all right you want to click the rectangle command and the way I like to make rectangles is I simply, as soon as I click the rectangle command, I go tab, tab, enter. And if I want to make a piece that's 100 inches wide, then I hit tab and I want to make it 25.5 inches deep. And I'm going to click OK. Now you'll notice to the left it just popped up. I'm going to use the Z command for zoom all. I'm just going to go ahead and delete all this junk over here. And I'm going to come take a look at this countertop that we just made. So when I'm drawing, if I'm drawing a series of things, what I'll do, you'll notice that when you draw the tab, tab, enter that you do in the beginning is saying make the first corner zero, zero. Now, if you look to the left, if you look right here, see where, where the corner is, you'll notice that on this side, there's a zero, and down here, there's a zero. That's a coordinate. Visualize that as the front left corner of your saw, okay? So if I'm drawing a series of shapes, I'm going to draw my object. It's going to, I'm going to call out my rectangle. It's going to pop up at 0, 0. I'm going to select Move. Now, you notice when I hover over it, the keyboard shortcut for M is Move. You're going to see a pattern here, okay? Delete is D. M is Move. C is Copy. R is Rotate. We hardly ever use Mirror, so we didn't give it a letter. O is Offset. F is Fillet. Join is J. T is Trim. E is extend. There is a couple exceptions. Explode is X because E is extend. And we figured X sounds like X, so hopefully you can remember that. And if you can't, I'm sorry, just wave the mouse over or click the icon. Change. We couldn't use C because C is copy. And change, well, the factory command is Control H, and it makes no sense, but that's what it's going to be, so just hit Control H to bring up change. You'll get used to it. It's a factory one. Anyway, moving right along. So now we've got a rectangle. I'm going to hit the keyboard shortcut M to move the object up. So I've put it into move mode. You look down below, it says move. And I ask myself the question, what do I want to move? I want to move everything inside this box. Boom, it turns blue. I ask myself the question, do I want to move anything else? The answer is no. And the answer is no, you right click. You now have a crosshair. The crosshair says, hey, where do you want to pick me up at? How about right here? Boom. Now I'm moving around. Notice I still have a crosshair. It's basically saying, hey, yo, where do you want to drop me off at? I want to drop you off right there. Now I'm going to use the rectangle command, and I'm going to look at my little thing and says, hey, i got to make a piece that's tab, tab, enter. Now I'm at zero, zero, and you'll notice the little white crosshair right here on the screen. See right there, zero, zero. And now I want to be 100 inches wide, but this one's only 8 inches deep. Boom. Look at that like magic. Now I'm going to hit M for move and draw a box around this object and move it up out of the way. And I'm going to hit my rectangle command. I'm going to go tab, tab, enter. And the last shape we got to make is 24 inches, tab by 24 inches, enter. Boom, there's my square. Woohoo! Now what else, what other cool shapes can we make? Well, we got the arc command. It's got a start point, a middle point, and an end point. Now that's not terribly useful that's just an arc can't do much with it it's not in the right spot I mean we can move it around a little bit if we want but it's kinda useless let me show you how to make arcs useful but before I can show you how to make an arc useful I need to take a little trip down the line here to the command offset 
offset command we're going to spend a minute on it here we're just going to go out of order because you need to have this to make some of this other stuff make sense so in the offset command what that does we call out a distance in this case 1.5 inches i'm going to change that to four inches um, we see where it says offset to point or offset on both sides just don't mess with that i don't even know what it does you don't need to know either it's not important and it doesn't affect anything so just worry about under what You've got a choice. You can make what's called a construction line or a line and arc or geometry. Now this is going to be a little bit of a long-winded conversation, so let's back up the truck because I need to explain to you what geometry is. But geometry is the green stuff. When I click OK, I'm going to offset a pink line or a mag magenta line. This is a construction line. In drawing, the machine that you're that you're trying to program is going to ignore construction lines. Construction lines are used to build things. In, For example, I offset this line four inches and I want to make an arc. In order to make an arc, I have to have a start point. Now notice I come over here and how the hell do I click on that corner? Which leads us into another thing. We're going to come down here to the bottom of the menu and talk about snaps. So if I have a cross here and I want to pick something up at a very specific point or start at a very specific point, I'm going to select Auto Snap right here. This keyboard shortcut for that is F5. I'm going to select it. Now you'll notice when the mouse hovers over, I get to the corner and it goes boop. It magnetically creates a ball. That guarantees that I'm going to start at the very, very precise corner. Now if I come down a little bit, it's going to pop to the middle. So the way the Auto Snap works, it's going to pop to the end, pop to the middle, or pop to the end. That's how auto snap works. And how handy is that when you're doing a three-point arc? You go pop, left click, pop, left click. Now you've got this arc. Ooh, where are we going to put this bad boy? Right there. Now the construction line was only used to determine and locate the apex of the arc. Now we're going to come in with the delete command and remove the construction line that we used for reference because we don't need to see it anymore. In this use case scenario, I don't want to see that line in the middle, so I'm going to explode the object by coming over here and explode. And notice when I click, it's one piece of geometry. Now when I click it and I go to delete, it's only, it's now the, what was one rectangle <clears throat> is now four pieces of geometry. I'm going to select the delete command and remove one piece of geometry. What's left behind is now, if I take the delete key, one, two, three, four pieces of geometry. I'm going to use the join command, which is the keyboard shortcut is J, and I'm going to draw a box from here to here by left clicking and then left clicking again. I don't want to join anything else. I'm going to right click to accept, and now when I go to delete this object, you'll notice that the four pieces of geometry have now become one. If I explode it, we're back to four pieces. Notice when I use the delete command and I go to delete it, it says delete four geometries. If I join it and select the delete command, it asks me if I want to delete one geometry. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, moving right along, we talked about an arc. Where do arcs come in handy? Islands, all kinds of applications. When you think of, so remember this 24 inch square? Let's pretend we wanted to do a five inch arc on all sides of this thing. What we would do is we'd hit O for offset over here, watch, O for offset, O. We're gonna go four inches with a construction line. Boom, 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 boom. And notice I'm clicking on the line with a left click, and then I'm going away to the side. I want it to go four inches. In. Boom. Now I'm going to come in and select start second and end points, arc. I'm going to go boop, boop, boop by left clicking. Now I'm going to do it again. Left click, left click, left click, left click, left click. Now we've got this weird looking thing here with these kind of semi, almost a ball look, but just showing you how all this kind of works together. Alrighty, the next command over is we, we sometimes need to make circles. I want a 12 inch bar sink that's round and made out of stainless steel or one of those Blanco black ones, right? So let's say it's 12 inches in diameter. I'm going to click center and diameter. On the bottom it's going to say what size circle do you want to make? I'm going to say 12 inches. I'm going to click OK. Ta-da! Now I've got this circle. By left clicking I can drop it. And there it is. Click OK. 
if you want to make a, another circle, you just click clicking OK and it'll just keep giving you circles. I can make the circle bigger by saying like 29 inches. Woohoo, even bigger circle. Notice I've got the snaps on, so the snark, you watch the snark, the circle is going to want to snap to specific locations. I'm just going to set it down right there. Circles are pretty simple. If you need to talk more about uh, circles, call one of the technicians. I'm sure they'll be happy to tell you about them. Okay, ellipse. Sometimes we have to make ovals. Pretty simple. If you want an oval like a Caxon 2210, that's around 17 inches wide. 14 inches tall. Now down here we have quadrants. Quadrants are what define how many arcs create the oval. I recommend you try to avoid going much higher than four. The more segments you create, the more math the software has to do to, for the, to calculate the finger bit pass, and the more odds you have of the software crashing from being overloaded. You don't need a bunch of quadrants to create these shapes. Four is plenty, as you'll notice when we look at how nice and perfect that oval looks. That's four quadrants. I'll show you what it looks like. We're going to explode it and you'll actually see the quadrants. That's plenty of arcs to make a beautiful oval. If you've got a million of these, you're, 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 the machine has to, it's not good for the machine, okay, without getting too technical for this particular training session. Okay, so that's how we make ovals. Now we, we talked about the delete key multiple times. The keyboard shortcut is D. I can delete by drawing a box around a group of objects. I can deselect by clicking on it again. I can reselect by choosing it. Well, let's go ahead and get rid of that too. Now I'm going to right click. It's going to say, hey, delete 15 geometries. Bye bye. Left click and they're gone. Just like that. Now change. Let's go back to offset. I want to spend another minute on offset. So in this case, if we want to offset a line four inches, we go like this. Now that's that line. Now notice if I hit the delete key, this is one piece of geometry. Watch what happens when I offset the geometry. And I'm going to offset it six inches. I click OK. I click on the geometry. I move away from the geometry in the direction I want it to expand. Boom. Now watch the difference. You'll notice I did geometry. Now watch, if I explode this, whoops, if I explode this, then if I go to choose offset and I've selected geometry, it will only offset the geometry I select because it's no longer joined. I would have to come in here and go like this. Now notice the difference. The pieces aren't auto filleting. Now if I join all of this, and let's say I tell it to go an additional 10 inches by hitting O for offset, strike 10 inches. I've not changed thing. I'm still on geometry, but now the geometry is joined. It stays together and auto fillets at the corners. Make sense? So now we're going to go to the offset command and talk about some more things. We can either offset a line. Now, if we come in here, you cannot, you can only set off lines as individual segments like this. I can off, I can also offset a line as geometry. That means I can take a construction line that I'm using for a reference and by offsetting that I can now use it as, a, as, a, as geometry as opposed to construction. Make sense? Okay, good. Makes sense to me. We're going to delete all this stuff because it's giving me a headache. Now, let's talk about some more commands. We talked about explode. Let's recap on explode. We hover over it. The keyboard shortcut is X. We select explode. We select the object we want to explode. Do we want to explode anything else? No, so we right click. Left click to select, right click to accept. Okay, now let's talk about some other fun commands. My favorite, move. Ooh, move's a fun one. So we're going to select this object. Do I want to move anything else? No. Right click to tell where I want to pick it up. Boom, now I've got a crosshair. What do I want to pick it up? I want to pick it up right there. Whoop, there's my line. Where do I want to drop it off? Right there. Ha! Let's try that again. I want to move this object. Do I want to move anything else? Yes, I want to also move this object. Where do I want to pick it up from? Right click, get a crosshair, pick it up right there, and drop it off right there. I'm going to move this object. Do I want to move anything else? Nope, I'm going to right click, got a crosshair, pick it up from here, and drop it off there. I'm going to move all this back over here. If I want to move it back over there, I'm going to select Move, select what I want to move, where do I want to pick it up from, where do I want to drop it off, left click. S left click to select, right click to accept, left click to pick, 
left click to drop, right click to exit the command. Now, another fun command, copy. Keyboard short for copy is supposed to be C. Yeah, there it is, C. What do I want to do? I want to copy. Uh, let me go ahead and join. I'm going to select the join command, which keyboard shortcut is J. I'm going to draw a box around this. I'm going to join it and turn it into one object. We can verify that by selecting the delete key. And you'll notice everything lights up when we go to select it. So now I'm going to copy. What do I want to copy? I want to copy this object. Right click. If I, am I done? Do I want to copy anything else? Nope. Right click. Now where do I want to pick this thing up from? I'll pick it up right about here. Left click. Where do I want to drop off my first copy? Well, right about here. Left click. Where do I want to drop this copy off? Left click. Now, that's how you pick up and drop off. Now watch this. I'm going to copy this object from the end point of this, and I'm going to go boom, 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 boom. And instead of saying boom, I should be saying left click. Let's try that again. Delete. I'm saying boom like I'm Steve Jobs. Now check it out. I'm going to copy this object from the left corner. I'm going to drop it right here. Then I'm going to drop another one right here by left clicking, left clicking, left clicking, left clicking, left clicking. Now I can then hit the C key command for copy, copy all this from the end point of that to the end point of, whoop, whoops, no good. Hit Control Z, which is your keyboard shortcut for undo. Select C for copy. Select the object, define where you want to pick the object up from, define where you want to drop the object off. That's how copy works. Let's talk about rotate. Keyboard shortcut for rotate is R. Select rotate. Select the object you want to rotate it by either selecting on it by left clicking and fire hit when you hit when you hit right click. Hey yay yeah, yay. Yeah. Rotate. Select the object you want to rotate by clicking on it with your left mouse. Right click if you're done selecting. You got a crosshair. Where do I want to rotate this object from? I'm going to pick somewhere in the middle. And I am now free rotating. I can look down below and I can call out an angle. I want to rotate it to 45 degrees. I click OK, click OK again, and now the object has rotated to 45 degrees. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it for rotate. Not terribly complicated. We'll do that one more time. We'll rotate everything on the screen. We're gonna, what do we want to rotate? This cube. Where do we want to rotate it from? The corner of this. Where do we want to go? Well, we can free rotate it, or we can go 180 degrees. Now we've flipped it 180 degrees and up and out of the way. All right, the next command over is the mirror command. People say, Mark, what am I supposed to do with the mirror command? Well, let me show you. We're going to do a little drawing exercise here real quick. Um, let's pretend we had an island that was tab, tab, enter, hit rectangle, tab, tab, enter, right? And the island was uh, 80 inches wide and tab, 40 inches deep, enter, and now we've got our island. And let's say the, the crazy customer wanted a very fancy corner on her very fancy island because, you know, we love making fancy things. We're going to use the offset command. What I'm going to do now just... Just work with me here. I'm going to go, I'm going to select, uh, let's go four inches. I'm going to select a line. Deselect offset as jumps because I want construction lines. In this case, I'm going to offset four inches this way and four inches this way. Now I've got reference points that I've built with my construction line. I'm then going to come up and select the line command, verify that I'm on auto snap, and I'm going to draw a line from here to here. Now I'm curious about the distance from this point to this point because that's about as far as I want to do my next step. So I'm going to use the query distance command or distance angle and I'm just going to put a line here and a line here and it's telling me that's 2.8 inches. So I think I want to go about a half inch. Let's try 3.5. I'm going to use the offset command. I'm going to tell it to offset a construction line 3.5 inches. I'm going to move this object to here. Boom. That's exactly what I wanted. Now I'm going to select L for line. And I'm going to snap in a line from here to here and here to here. Boom. So now when I'm starting up, oh, no good. See, I made a mistake there. I'm going to hit Control Z and undo it. Hit Space Bar, brings back the last command. I'm going to redraw that line from there to where I actually wanted it. Now I need to do some housekeeping because you guys are looking at this like I've lost my mind. I can feel it. So I'm going to hit D for delete. I'm going to select the objects that I want to delete that I'm not going to be using in this portion of the drawing anymore that I just created for a reference. So now I've selected those two things. Can I go ahead and delete this? Yes, I can. 
So now I'm going to delete these three reference lines, and I'm left with this. Now I'm going to teach you a new command. Sometimes when we're drawing objects, we actually want to make some things go away. Well, if I'm going to machine this corner, I've got several options. One option is I could explode the drawing. That breaks this big piece into multiple pieces. Then I can use the fillet command. I'm going to tell it to fill it to zero. I'm going to select here and here, and you'll see that that has gone away by joining and filling it. Another option is I could use the trim command. Whenever I use the trim command, I simply select trim, come down below, select all, finish. And now it says tool path to trim. I come in here and I'm going to trim it. Accomplish the same thing in two different ways. So let's do that one more time. And we're going to do the trim one first. I'm going to say this five times for you, like you're a three-year-old, so you'll never forget it again. Trim, all, finish. Not trim, not trim, not trimming something else. Trim, all, finish. Trim, all, finish. Ha-ha, <laughs> trim, all, finish. And as long as you go trim, all, finish, you're going to be fine. So now we've got this funny little square here. Let's keep right on drawing because we're not anywhere near done yet. Now I'm going to use the offset command. I'm going to go one inch. I'm going to push a line back. Boom, boom. Now I'm going to use the arc command, and I'm going to go from the end point of this reference line to the midpoint of that F reference line to the end point of this reference line. So now I've established a nice arc. I don't need to look at my reference lines anymore. I'm going to use the delete command. I'm going to select this line and this line by left clicking. Do I want to delete anything else? No, I'm going to right click to make it go away. Now I've got this funny little Batman looking thing, and that's not very sexy, so I'm going to use the fillet command. And I decided I don't want to fill it zero. I actually want to soften that corner up yet, so I'm going to put in a 0.5 inch radius. Boom, boom, 0.5. I'm going to select individual, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to go doot, doot. And now you notice I put a nice little soft curve on that. I'm going to come in here and go boop, boop. All right, and the last thing I want to do, that's kind of a weird little transition there. I think that should have about a 2 inch radius on it. So now I'm going to use the fillet command, select the number 2, select individual. I'm going to go click and click click and click. So now this lady's got her wonderfully weird sort of fancy mushy looking corner. So the next thing I want to do, I don't do I want to go through that entire drawing rigmarole three more times or should we just say screw it and give her an island with one fancy corner? Well, it turns out it's not that big of a deal. So what we're going to do now is we're going to explode this part of the drawing. So now we've got the hump over here, and you'll notice it's broken up into its contiguous parts, right? You've got the little arc, straight lines on the arc, a little straight line. Okay, so anyway, now I want to put this corner down on this end of the drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mirror command. What do I want to do? I want to mirror this part of the drawing. See where it's blue? And I want to put that part of the drawing over there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, do I want to mirror anything else right now? No. So I'm going to right click, and it says, hey, I've got a crosshair. So I'm going to select a crosshair, not on the top one, because the top one is no longer centered because we've done something right here. We need to select from this one. We're going to come up. Now notice how we are in free range. If I were to click right here, it would mirror it 45 degrees away from me. I needed to mirror up and down. Picture this as a hinge. When you use the, see how the mirror command, if it's over here, then there's a hinge. It's going to be over there. Well, if I'm angled like this, it's going to wind up over here. I need to be straight up and down. How do we do that? ortho right so now we can only go straight up and down or straight left and right well we know we don't want to go that way so we're going to go this way and just and it doesn't matter we don't have to go all the way up it doesn't matter where we go we do right here boom keep the original or don't keep the original in this case we do want to keep the original i'm going to click yes bang now if we look to our right we can see we've now transitioned the detail that we had on the left to the right corner now i'm going to zoom in on this now remember what we do when we want to get rid of a line that intersects with a line we use the command, whenever we use trim, we say trim, all, finish. And one more time, because I know you're all going to forget. Trim, all, finish. Say it with me together, nice and loud. Trim, all, fucking finish. Click, fucking click, okay? Trim, all, finish. You got it, right? All right, check it out. Boom, like magic. And we could continue to do this. We would just simply use the mirror command again. We could then select both of these. Uh, we would have, we, well, what we would, okay, so here's how we would solve this problem. We now no longer have a center line to mirror off of, so what do we do? Well, we want to take these objects right here, and we need them to hinge down, right? So we need a line that's naturally centered. Well, we don't have that line anymore, but we can make one. Watch. So I'm going to go like this real quick. Boom, 
Boom. That's my center this way. Now when I hit spacebar, I'm going to put a line right here, and I only need to go that much. So now this line represents the hinge that is the center of this and this. Watch. So I'm going to use the mirror command, select this and this, and I'm going to hinge off this line. Yes. Boom. I'm going to zoom in on here. We're going to go, <laughs> let's say it together, trim, all, finish. Make that shit go away. Make that go away. Boom. Boom. All right. Look at that. Money. Payday. It's a billiard table. We could put a pocket right here. We could play pool on that thing. All right. So that kind of shows you a little bit how we use the trim command. Now, there's some other commands up here that we haven't played with yet. That was kind of breaking into the mirror mode. We've seen the offset. Let's go over it one more time. So now we got this kookadoodle crazy island, right? Let's go ahead and join everything by hitting the J command and drawing a box on it and then right clicking. Now we're going to select offset and just for fun, let's go two inches, three inches. Let's offset the geometry. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but I think I like it. All right, so that's the offset command. Now let's talk about extend. What, the reason I want to show, I don't know what I'm doing, uh, extend. So now we've got a line, right? And I want to take this line and I want to extend it to the first line over here. So I'm going to use the extend command. Now notice when I select extend, it says select boundary geometries. Where do I want the line to go? If you get confused in AlphaCam, stop, take a deep breath, look down here at the bottom, and you, there's some clues sometimes. Not every time, but sometimes there'll be a clue. Here it says select boundary geometry. Why they can't say select where you want the line to go, like most people that speak English would do, I don't know. But where I want the line to go is to right here. I got it. Do I want it to go anywhere else? No. So I'm going to right click. Now I'm going to left click and look like magic. Go boom. I click over here and I'll go boom. Look at that. That's how the extend command works. And then I'm going to show you where you're going to use extend all the time. Watch this. I'm going to hit D for delete because I don't want to look at this weirdness anymore. Now let's say I've got a bar sink that is uh, uh, 12 inches up or uh, th 4 inches up and 15 inches over from the right. I'm going to use the offset command. I'm going to go 15 inches from the very edge, whoops, offset, offset, offset command, line, not geometry, line. And notice, I went, look, watch this. I want to offset a line, but I had it on accident on geometry. The minute I went to click, I saw the whole thing light up. Okay, that's all I needed. No, I didn't take, I didn't go, oh, damn, it's wrong. I paid attention to what I was doing, just back up the truck, right? So now we're going to go offset, line, 15 inches. Doom, doom. Now let's say I want the bar sink to be uh, four inches back from that. Offset, four inches. Dun, dun. Now here, normally when I make a sink spike, I go from the bottom up. So we're going to do that. We use the extend command. Where do I want this line to go? I want this line to go right here. Right click, boom. Now I've got a cross here to drop my sink in. So I'm going to go trim. Whenever we say trim, we say all finish. I'm going to trim this away. I'm going to right, I'm going to come over here and select delete, get rid of my reference line. Now I have a 14 inch spike. All right. So the next thing I got to do is use my circle command and I got to make me a little circle. It's 12 inches in diameter. And this is supposed to represent my sink, but I'm picky. I can't stand sinks that don't look like sinks. So we're going to pretend this 12 inch hole has a quarter inch negative reveal. So I'm going to use the offset command again. I'm going to go point two five and I'm gonna give it a negative reveal because that's just how sinks work now doggone it I left that thing as construction that bums me out so I'm gonna hit the change command and I'm gonna change the construction line which is pink to geometry which is green and I'm gonna go click do I want to change anything else nope right click boom now that shows the sink flush. That shows the sink with a negative reveal. Wouldn't it be cool to know where the rim of the sink is? I think so. So I'm going to go offset on this particular stainless steel sink, and I know it's one inch. I'm going to select geometry. If I select line, watch what happens. I get a pink one. I don't want a pink one. I want a green one. So I'm going to offset geometry. Right? So this represents the outside of the sink. Once I've got the outside of the sink, I like to create a pull tag. I come in here with my line and I snap in right there and I make a line coming up. Now notice I'm an ortho. It's going straight up and down because I'm an ortho. If you're not an ortho, it's going to go like this and that's no bueno. You want to be going straight up and down. So we're going to select ortho. We're going straight up and down. Now we're going to left click. Now check this out. We're going to, now we want to change some. The only thing we actually want to cut is this geometry right here. 
right? That's our cutout. So we want to turn everything else into construction. We want to know where it's at, but we don't want to cut it. So we're going to go change ge uh, geometry to construction, and we're going to select the outside, this one, and right click. Now that's a properly drawn sink. Now myself, I'm a little bit of a weirdo. I take this one extra step. It drives everyone nuts, but I love to do it because I think it's professional. I come over here. I select edit line type. Another command you're going to learn today. I'm going to select dashed, and I want to do a 0.5 inch, a half inch dash. Click OK, and I like to do my rim of the sink as a dash. The last thing I do when I draw a sink is I come up and I select text, and I put in a one inch text. I usually select stencil. And I click OK, and I come in and I'll say, test, test, bar, sink. Now it's properly labeled. I might come in here and hit Control D, with, or select Dimension. You'll notice it says Dimension, Control D. I, it's a ruler. I want to measure. I want to be able to see how big my sink is. So I'm going to hit Control D, and I'm going to select, I can select diameter. Ha! Huh. Now, this is going to be what size diameter? If it was 12 inches and I did a quarter inch offset for a negative deville, that diameter is actually going to wind up being 11.5. Now, notice how big and honking that 11.5 is. That's not working for me. So I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to hit Spacebar to bring that command back. Uh huh. And then I'm going to select Configure. And I don't, I don't want a 2.5 inch text. I want 1 inch. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to come back here and do that again. And now it looks a little bit, now this is uh, pretty weird. So I put that right about there, and then I would use the move command by hitting M, select my text, bring it up a little bit so it looks nice. Maybe take it out of ortho so I can center it up a little bit better. Now I'm out of ortho, I'm just going to drop it right where I want it. That looks a little more professional. The last thing we need to do is take this little pull tab, hit Control H, change it from geometry to construction so we don't cut it, and now we've got a proper sink. Well, one more thing I want to teach you guys. In Control D, while we're here, I'm going to use Aligned. Uh, yeah, it's that time, I guess, where we got to spend a few minutes to talk about all the amazing different ways we can measure things. Let's back up the truck and talk about measuring with the Dimension command. All right, let's, for our Dimension class, we're going to draw a quick Tab, Tab, Enter, because I want to make a rectangle that is 24, Tab, 24. So I made a 24 by 24 inch box, hit Enter. Notice it popped right up at 0, 0. So I'm going to use the M command, or Move command, by hitting M. I'm going to select the object I want to move by clicking on it. Do I want to move anything else? No, I'm going to right click. Where do I want to pick it up from? It doesn't matter. I just want to get it off my, 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 my island. I'm going to set it over here. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about when we hit Control D, which is a keyboard shortcut for dimension, we've got horizontal. Think of a horizon. That's getting that's pulling the dimension going left to uh, the, 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 the the left to right dimension, right? So if I come in here, I click OK. I'm going to turn the auto snap off. I'm going to click on the line and I'm going to pull it down. Now, notice the 24 moves free until I'm right about at the center, and then it snaps. That's intentional so that when you're pulling dimensions, it doesn't look sloppy. And then you just, I just kind of eyeball. I like to do it right about there. Another, so like, okay, oops. Now look what happened. I missed the click. I missed the click again. I didn't miss the click. I'm trying to pull a horizontal dimension. It's not working, right? It's no good. I would have to select vertical. Now, what's interesting about this, when I select vertical, boom, now I've got a 24. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. I'm going to hit D for delete. And then I'm going to draw a box around that bogus dimension by left-clicking and left-clicking. Do I want to delete anything else? No. I'm going to right-click, click OK, and send that away. Now, you notice it says 24 by 24. I measured this one horizontally and this one vertically. That's a pain in the ass. What we could have done is gone Control-D, delete, right? What we could have done is gone Control-D for delete, select aligned. All that means is it doesn't matter where I click it's going to pull the dimension off. Now what's interesting about this is if I rotate this object 90 degrees and I use the aligned command, now this is where things get interesting, control D aligned, and I pull my dimension, it's still the same thing. But what's different when I select vertical and horizontal? Well, let's take a look. So now if I go control D horizontal and I select a line, suddenly I get this dimension. Control D, if I select vertical, I get this dimension. 
that's the difference between vertical and and if I select if I go control D and select aligned I'm gonna get 24 inches okay now there's a couple other things we could do with dimension we can check the diameter which I already showed you radius is the same it's just I don't know what this max Y business is but angle if I want to find the angle I can measure the angle from here to here and you'll notice it's 270 or if I measure it from here to here it'll say 90 make sense now what other things we do one of my favorite dimension commands control D is leader line sometimes when you're working on kitchens you want to point at something I want to point at that corner right um, or let's say I've got a little tiny notch or I want to make a note or let's say I've got a seam right and I want to do a stop polish I could then select text which we haven't even got into yet but text is with little letters control T is text uh, I'm going to use a one inch font I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say stop polish at 12 inches so you can make a nice little note on your drawing and point and call things out very cool so remember control D leader line um, I don't know what point does I'm gonna look oh wow oh it's a coordinate okay so what that's telling you is where you're at in the drawing for example if I go to zero zero like see that's calling out different coordinates just think of it like a grid coordinate you're at 100 by 47 and that's it I guess that would be useful if you were drawing big complicated drawings we, you're never going to use that command I promise but it's kind of cool we both learned something tonight. all right moving right along so we're gonna go back to our drawing tools okay let's talk about we've got dimension we covered move and rotate and mirror and offset let's talk about fillet a little bit so we've got an L I want to make that L into a curve I can tell it make me a six inch fillet I go boom boom there's my six inch fillet I can draw a rectangle I can select fillet uh, let's do a two inch fillet and select all and then it'll apply it to all corners I can hit control Z to undo that I can select fillet now you all are gonna do this so I'm gonna show you what it is and I'm gonna tell you right now you don't ever need to do it but select bubble fillet watch this silly crap I don't know what you do with that but we're not gonna use it so just hit control Z now you know you don't have to you don't have to find out on your own I just did it for you so now I'm gonna hit fillet again which is the keyboard shortcut is F we're gonna select and we're gonna try to reverse fillet I think this is gonna be kinda of cool I think it's gonna be like a, a cove yep now that has a use I could see using that command so that's like a two inch reverse fillet if you haven't seen that guys that's a new one for me too that's kinda of cool um, hopefully your version if you have an older version of alpha cam some of the features you see may not be available to you alright so moving right along so extend by distance now there's certain use case scenarios where like say you have a rectangle and you decide you want to explode it and you want to extend by distance say four inches um, you could go boom 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 and notice I'm just left clicking and it's extending the lines if you if I do that again if I bring the command back up I can also put in a negative distance like negative four inches and I can retract lines see I just pull those away four inches so you can extend or retract right oh wow that's kind of interesting huh. I didn't know that was possible all right well, we're all learning things tonight that's what it's all about the final command I want to teach you on this whole list of commands is the break command um, you won't use that too often but sometimes it comes in handy you can actually just pick a random spot click on it and then if I go to move you'll notice I've broken this into two pieces um, and so that's the basic functionality of these tools and the drawing and um, we talked about text we click on text we can choose geometry we can choose different fonts if we want I tend to like to use stencil because it's just less drawing work for the graphics card it's just less work there's less geometry um, you know whatever you it's just like a word processor you can uh, draw in dimension text or geometry right so like if you want to engrave you can draw in geometry um, you can call out the positions you can actually create text and put it on a arc for example actually that's kinda of cool check this out guys you'll dig this so I can draw an arc I can take the text command I can select uh, baseline or arcs I'm gonna call out a four inch font 
And I'm going to start writing on a curve, drawing on a curve. <laughs> How tricky is that? I'm going to delete my geometry. Now I've got some... Oops, escape, escape, delete. And now I've been drawing fonts on a curve. Let's see. So we went over zoom all, right? Zoom window. Let's drill down and zoom in on our little sink. Zoom window, drill down our little sink. Yeah, undo, redo. So like in this case, I'm going to draw two boxes. I'm going to hit undo and redo, bring the box back. If I want to bring in my symbol library, I'm going to drop it off right there. I've got all my symbols. We'll talk about that in the drawing class. Um, we got our straightened parts. So we can straighten crooked things out. So I want to straighten all this out. I'm going to reference that line. Cool. Now it's all straightened out. Um, offset element. Let's create a mitered apron on this thing just because we can, because we're cool like that. Boom. A couple mitered aprons. Common line move. Uh, let's move this object by left clicking, right click, because I don't want to move anything else from this line to, uh, let's put it right here. There you go. Just like that, like magic. All right, now, uh, simple and fine line segments. That's just too annoying. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Ortho, we're going to make a line. We put an ortho mode. It only goes up, down, left, right. Uh, rectangle, anytime we want to draw a rectangle, we just hit tab, tab, enter. How wide is my rectangle? 100 inches. Tab, how tall is it? 100 inches. Now we're going to have a big old box somewhere on the screen. Boom, there it is, 100 by 100 inch box. I want to move that thing out of the way because it's bugging me. I'm going to hit the M for move. I'm going to left click, select what I want to move. I'm going to right click because I don't want to move anything else. I want to pick it up from here and I want to drop it off over there. All right, arcs. I want to make an arc from the the turn my snaps on end point of this now notice on these snaps I can select end point of that and I can go to the center circle of that of that ta-da okay arcs center and diameter I want to make a 12 inch circle boom lots of 12 inch circle. look at that 12 inch circle ellipse uh, 17 by 14 ellipse. Woohoo, now we got us an oval. I want to delete all this crap because it's giving me a headache. I'm just going to keep my box. I did that by left clicking to select, right clicking, I'm sorry, right clicking, left clicking to select, right, right clicking to accept. Change, I'm going to change that from geometry to construction because I the green's bugging me now. Woohoo, now it's green. I want to explode it. I want to take this one thing and turn it into four things, but I decided I don't like that, so I'm going to use the join command and put it all back together. Now you notice if I hit D for delete, I hover over it as one piece of geometry. All right, we've got the move command. What do I want to do? I want to move this object by left clicking and selecting. Right click. Do I want to move anything else? No. Right click to accept. It's asking me where I want to pick the object from. I have auto snaps engaged. I'm going to pick it up from the corner of this and drop it off at, over here somewhere. I want to copy. What do I want to copy? I want to copy this this object. Left click to select. Right click to select where you want to pick it up from. Pick copy one from here. Drop one there. Drop one there, and continue to do so. Simple. All right. Rotate command. Select the rotate command. Select the object you want to rotate. Select the pivot point. If you want to move in 90 degree increments, leave it in ortho. If you want to free rotate, deselect that or go down below and call out a specific angle. In this case, we will rotate the object at 22.5 degrees. Hit enter and enter again. Bang. Got it. Beautiful. So the next command over is offset. With the offset command, we can offset lines. In this case, one inch. We can offset geometry. Boom, boom. Now we're offsetting the green stuff. See, we offset a line. Now we turn construction into geometry by offsetting it. Fill it. We want to put a 7-inch radius on all these corners. Ta-da. Or, aha. So that's no bueno. Actually, that's kind of cool. We're going to leave that here. And we're going to use this fillet command, and we're going to select rever deselect reverse fillet, and then select this rectangle right here. And now we've done all four corners. Um, in order to show you how awesome it Explode works, 
we need to explode something so now we're going to left click to select right click to explode you'll notice now it's in a bunch of little pieces I must, now I want to put it all back together by selecting the join command draw a box around everything till it turns blue right click to accept and now everything's joined in order for me to show you how cool tr the trim command works is I got to draw a line through something and I'm going to use trim all finish and trim that away so it's inside the rectangle extend I'm gonna draw a line inside this box and I want to use the extend command define the boundary right click to accept and then push that object to the ends of the boundary that's how the extend works extend by distance I want to send it out four inches click OK click on what I want to extend or I can select the command and reverse that by making it a negative number in this case negative 12 inches click OK Boom, boom, and now we've shrunk it by distance. The last command I'm going to show you is break. You simply can select individual, click OK, turn your snap on, left click. Now I can delete half of that line. I broke it in half. By using the snap, I was able to go to dead center mass. And those are your basic drawing tools for AlphaCam. The next thing we're going to go through is actually explaining how to draw. And we're going to draw a basic kitchen. We're going to lay it out and create a couple nests. We're going to save it. We're going to do all those kind of things. And this is your first basic AlphaCam drawing class, Introduction to AlphaCam Drawing Tools.